lecture, we are going to investigate the main decisions related to problem setting. As a recap, problem setting is the first phase of a decision-making process and aims at understanding which are the main elements of the problem. Three are the main concepts to take into account, which are goals, constraints and development of the models. Let's start with the identification of the main goals. First of all, it is important to clearly identify the main goals of the problem on the basis of the triggering event, which is the event that is activating the decision-making process. It is important to have a clear and complete assessment of the goal of decision-making process, taking into consideration that cognitive models and mental models might influence the perception of the problem of the specific decision-maker. For this reason, in the identification of the objective, it is sometimes important to have an upside-down approach to try to consider the process also with a totally different perspective. A key aspect in the identification of the main goals pertains to the concept of trade-off. A trade-off occurs when more goals are pursued and it is impossible to optimize both goals. The improvement of a goal entails necessarily the reduction of the other goal. For example, imagine to have one choice with two different alternatives and two different objectives to pursue. If you improve objective 1, objective 2 decreases and vice versa. This creates a trade-off curve and the decision maker should identify in which point of the curve to position the choice. For example, a high quality is often in trade-off with a low cost. Which are typical examples of trade-off? First of all, most of the decision-making process involves several stakeholders and each stakeholder is bringing a personal view of the problem and a personal purpose. In this situation, it might happen that goals of different stakeholders are in contrast to each other. Actually, also a single stakeholder might be pushed by different goals and so a trade-off raises also with a single decision-maker. A variable impacting on trade-offs also just with a single stakeholder is time. A typical example is the case of long versus short-term decisions. In some cases, an option is improving performance in the short terms, whereas a second option is better in the long term. Generally, this choice depends on the propensity of the decision maker as well as on the external environment. A company with a difficult financial propensity is more interested in project with a short payback time rather than a higher profit but in the long term. On the contrary, a company with a strategic orientation and a healthy financial position is very often more interested in the overall profit, although achieving a longer time horizon. Another issue pertains to the trade-off between risk and profit. Very often, riskier options are also likely to provide higher profit, although not certain. On the contrary, less risky options are safer, but the expectable profit is lower as well. This is the typical case of several financial options. A bond is less risky than a stock option, but the obtainable capital value is lower as well. The second element to consider in a problem setting is related to constraints. Constraints are defined as bonds that determine feasible actions and behaviors. The typical examples of a constraint is the budget one. Just the alternatives that are consistent with budget bonds are feasible, thereby automatically excluding all the alternatives requiring a higher budget. Constraints might come by several and heterogeneous elements. External environment could be a constraint because of existing regulation to operate into a market or requirements that are necessary to operate into an industry or into a marketplace. Constraints could also come by the organization itself. Resources available into the company, available competences and skills, technologies existing in the organization might represent a constraint to consider. In some cases, also decisions taken by other organizational units could represent a constraint too. Finally, also previous decisions or upper-level decisions might represent a constraint. For example, 
If an investment in a particular technology was realized in previous years, decisions that require totally different investments might be excluded because the use of the technology is a constraint. Identifying the right constraints is a key point of problem setting. In this view, three points need to be considered. First of all, it is important to assess whether constraints are true or supposed. Perception issue might create mental perception that bring people in seeing constraints that actually do not exist. Secondly, it is important to assess whether constraints are rigid or flexible. For example, some units consider market demand as a constraint, whereas marketing is used to consider market demand as an endogenous variable and so not a constraint at all. Finally, a key warning is that constraints are not necessarily negative. Constraints often simplify problem modeling and selection because variables might be eliminated and alternatives might be discarded automatically.